you know, I'm a human physiologist. And so I think it's been an impressive journey and I really commend Amazentis for building science and backing the, the story from molecule all the way to product uh, with good science. It's, it's a rarity these days that it's done that way. Pick your favorite theory of aging. There's lots of them, but one of them is a mitochondrial theory of aging. And it really goes something like this, that from this transition from young to elderly muscle, the healthy mitochondria are instead replaced with damaged mitochondria. And it could be for various reasons, could be oxidative damage, protein misfolding, lots of different mechanisms. And as Dr. Singh pointed out, uh, it's important to clear these elements from the muscle cell, and that's the process of mitophagy. And this is what I think has impressed me the most about the work that Amazentis has done, and I'm not gonna go through all of them here, but they've gone all the way from mitochondrial function all the way down to the most recently published energized uh, trial. And uh, I, shouldn't, I need to update this, not in review, it's now published. But the bottom line is the science that's being built is, is impressive. And this is the part where it really hit home for me that something was happening with this compound. And, and these are the, some of the functional tasks that we're talking about. So these are the changes in isokinetic hamstring strength. We've got changes in VO2, and we've got changes over here in distance uh, meters walked. So there are functional implications associated with this. These are you know, about 12% and 10%. You might not think that's a overly, uh, an overly big uh, increase, but I think it's important. We've got a significant or almost significant increase in VO2 peak here, and whoops, excuse me, at the same time, uh, we've got an increase in the change in distance walked. So there are functional outcomes that are associated with taking urolithin that have, I think, uh, an important relevance for people, particularly as they go older. So urolithin safe and well tolerated, it improves strength resulted in clinically relevant improvements. So you can argue about statistical significance versus clinical relevance. Urolithin reduced in a dose dependent manner circulating acyl carnitines. That's the outward biomarker of mitochondria health, and it resulted in various changes in muscle that were indicative of improved metabolic health, which I didn't show you, uh, but the paper will uh, go to great pains to, to point that out. You could, if you like, prehabilitate by taking uh, something like uh, MitoPure and, and with a high dose of urolithin A to prevent some of the, the loss of muscle mass that occurs. So urolithin A is a promytophagy agent. It's safe and well tolerated. Consumption of urolithin overcomes population diversity in gut microbiotic composition. So in other words, we're not all urolithin producers. Some of you might be fortunate and you may be. Um, and urolithin promotes improvements in mitochondrial function by preventing accumulation of damaged mitochondria. So working to suppress proteolysis or breakdown is not a particularly productive way to do things, particularly in disuse scenarios. Urolithin results in increases in strength and clinically relevant changes in older sedentary persons, and it may be an important agent in combating disuse atrophy. Thank you very much.